five four three two one good morning everybody it is uh monday night for us tuesday morning for you guys tuesday morning for you guys yes <clears throat> so um really hope you guys had a chance to watch yesterday's devotional if you didn't please watch it this coming sunday is our 10 year anniversary at house of rest yeah that's so awesome 10 years guys may of 2011 was when house of rest had its first service in a banquet room of a of a hotel a la quinta huh yeah yeah and that was 10 years ago and this sunday i'm asking everyone we're asking everyone <coughs> that you come and and uh and and worship with us celebrate yeah. with us you know and this is a huge deal you know i was talking to my brother angel earlier you know and um, i was telling him you know and he had said because he was in ministry many 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 years before i was even a christian and he says man that's an amazing accomplishment david he goes most churches don't make it to 10 years you know and um because of the lord i believe that we have always asked the lord to be the senior pastor of the church Amen. Um, I've always asked God, like, Lord, if you're not in it, I don't want it. I've always asked the Lord to open doors. Uh, and I, I only want doors open that are doors that he opens. Amen. You know, and, um, you know, so we're hoping that if you, if you watch us sometimes, if you feel you're part of our family, whether you're in locally in the Modesto area or wherever you're at in the world that that you either attend or watch online you know I'm, I'm really excited really looking forward to it you know and it's a big it's a big deal you know especially in this day and age when um, they say so many pastors give up so many pastors lose that fire so many pastors uh, fall in sin. So many pastors, you know, just, you know, it, it's open season on pastors. And a lot of times, some pastors, honestly, they put it on themselves. Let's, let's be honest. But it is open season. And the enemy wants to destroy, you know. And um, so hopefully, you know, we pray that you can join us. And in a beautiful celebration of 10 years of, of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, I was going through, um, I was going through a lot of the pictures mm -hmm. and just going all the way back to when you did start, because I wasn't even in your life back then. And I even had a chance to see so much of your life even from back then yeah and slowly progressing throughout the years and i've just been putting some things together and and i've seen so much growth in some people that have that have just been around mm -hmm. since even the time since when i even started coming <coughs> yeah and even the six years that i've been around now i'm just like wow lord i've seen so much growth so much change in mm -hmm. some people and it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful just to see, um, just to see the, the many faces that have come through the relationships, the, the bonds that we've built with families and, yeah. you know, and some that have come and gone, but yet still remain in our lives and in such special ways, you know, and just, it's just so weird because I even see some of the, the children that were babies and now you see them grown up a little bit, yeah. you know, and I'm just like, wow. But um, I don't know, just looking at pictures and just choosing pictures to show and just everything. I'm, I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of blown away. 
I just never thought, I just never thought that we'd ever, or that I'd, me, I speak for myself, that I'd ever be in a position to be able to, to be in a position like this, to be able to, to share something like this so special. I just think it's amazing. You know, I, I, I I got a beautiful text. Well, I got many texts actually today from many people because of yesterday's video. (laughs) Um, but I, I do want to say, one of them, one of them really hit me today. It was a uh, brother Larry. Brother Larry, you probably see him on there, Larry Patron. Um, he was with me in Atwater. Um, he was actually the one that embraced me when I got there. When you first get to uh, any prison, um, it's true. You get hit up. Hey, where are you from? You know, that's that's just you already know you're gonna get hit up, and if you're a blood, a crib, white, north, south, whatever. Um, you every time you you hit a facility, the potential of violence is always there, because you have no idea. Whatever it is you are, what your kind did or has done to people there, and you could be walking into a trap. Obviously, this was a prison camp when I was arriving, so the tension wasn't as bad. Let's be honest, because this was toward my the end of my sentence, and um, and uh, but either way, I got asked, "Hey, where are you from? Who, you know, who you roll with?" And I said, "I'm a Christian," you know, and cause some people recognize me because of my music, you know, yeah. and um, they're like, "Oh, okay," and then they they said, um, "Your guys are over there," or something like that. Yeah, and um, I think they went walked up to Larry. And they told Larry, hey, one of your guys are here. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and Brother Larry came and embraced me, um, made me a spread because I was hungry. And it was already late night. Really? It was it was late evening and I was hungry. And um, actually, no, you know what, Larry? I don't think you made the first spread. I think Miguel did. Remember Miguel? Remember the car show here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Which, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, because um, I think what happened was, even though Miguel was a, a functioning northerner, he was in Terminal Island with me, and he saw me preaching in the yard. And because of that, he respected the fact that I was still serving God, you know, in another facility. You and know? he fed you your first bed. If I recall, I, I, I got a bad memory. Because um, I remember I met Larry, but I think Miguel gave me a spread. Mm. Yeah, you got to meet Miguel. Yeah, I did. I got to meet a lot of the guys already. <coughs> yeah, and yeah. Miguel was is, was is not a Christian. He was uh, an active northerner, you know. And, um, and it's funny because we ran into each other a few months ago, and you got to meet him, mm. met his wife, and, mm. you know, and he's like, man, you're still serving God. Amen. What a beautiful testimony for him to see. Yeah. You know, and as a matter of fact, his car club had a small car show and he had me speak for about 15 minutes and share my testimony. Yeah. You know, so anyways, uh, I didn't mean to say the whole Miguel story, but um, Brother Larry messaged me after watching yesterday's video. And he had said basically that it's on my phone and I'm using it so I can't read it. But it really touched me, man, because he said that the things that I taught him have helped him be the man that he is today serving God. It impacted him. Yeah. You know, that he was serving a long sentence, I think a 12-year sentence. And when I got there, he had a year left. And I didn't know that he was praying for God to send a brother to teach him. Wow. To disciple him. Wow. And he tells me today on, on the text, he goes, Brother, I prayed for you before you even got there. Wow. And the Lord sent you. And and you taught us and discipled us that has helped me, that helped carry me to be the man that I am today. You know, and I'm just like, that's, that's huge, man. That's huge. Because I used to think a man was the most violent guy, the tough guy, the one that could sell the most dope, or the one, 
you know and you have to put on this persona an image a certain yeah. way of being you know but a real man is something different you know a real man is a god after is a, is a man after god's heart yeah that is a man that's a woman too yeah. that's a real woman yeah and that's a real man is when you seek god and you could be an example and a pillar to other people what greater what greater thing can you carry into eternity when you stand before God someday for him to say, good and faithful servant? Yeah. And, you know, ladies, that's the one thing that I've always said, you know, and, and I've always told you this, too. If, if David cannot love God more than me, then how can he love me? And I'm, I'm so blessed when, you know, when I say, you know, I, I love that you put God before anything and everyone and even before me, um, because we're, we're not to idolize our spouses, you know, because if it weren't for the love of God, then how can he love me? I, I love that he, that, that you just love God, you know, and you place God before anything. You know, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the Lord had been had been with me through so much, especially during those years. What fell? The cat. The oh. cat's playing with something over there. Oh. You know, the Lord, um, he's done so much for me throughout my incarceration. Because I was serving God my first whole six years of my life. My <laughs> My first six years of my Christian life as a Christian was in prison. And he had done so much for me that I told him, I remember praying on the, at the gate when I was about to be released. They called me that day. I still remember hugging Brother Johnny, Edwin, all those guys, you know, and, and walking to the gate. And they told me, stand at the gate and wait, wait till we come get you. And I felt so lonely, man. And I remember just praying. And I'm like, Lord, I promise you, you never left me. And I promise you, when I leave this place, I will never, ever leave you. Mm -hmm. You know, and I try to be, I try to be that man. Now, you know, I, I what kind of man would I be? that he did everything for me, protected me, held me, encouraged me, lifted me up, gave me life, gave me hope. What kind of man would I be to turn my back on him? I can never do that. Even to the death, I can never do that. I can never deny my Lord. Yeah. You know, and, and, I'm just like, Lord, let me be that example. Yeah. <coughs> and, and, you know, and you know, it's so beautiful, babe, because, you know, here he gives you a, a, a woman who doesn't know how to trust a broken woman who doesn't even know what it's like to be treated, you know, how to be loved or be treated um, the right way and doesn't even know what what that's like and for for him to say here I am going to give you something um, and for me to be able to say okay Lord I don't I don't know what that's like Lord I don't know what it's like to be treated but here you are giving me someone and you're entrusting me in in his hands you know yeah. and i never knew i never knew what that what that love was like i never understood that you know until i met you i, yeah. I never truly understood you know I, I do want to say this is that i am by no means perfect no, no, he's not, guys. <laughs> um, I have my hiccups, guys. I didn't come out of prison 
like this super perfect Christian man, and I'm not that now. And, and this is what I mean. I'm not talking about sin. I'm talking about this. I'm talking about the fact that I had to learn how to not live beyond my means. I used to be a drug dealer. Everything was money for me. And then to come out of prison with nothing. You think that wasn't frustrating for me? I'm sure it was. You know, to not be able to walk into any restaurant or go anywhere. You know what I mean? That was a hard struggle to learn. I met you and you, you were know? in an RV. Yeah. I didn't know how to be the parent I, I wanted to be. I had to learn that. You know, um, I didn't learn how, like, I, sometimes I would lose my patience with, with you. You know what I mean? Things like that. So here's the thing, though. Here's, here's what I am saying. And I used to say this to, to my wife, and I'm just, since it's just us friends, right? We're just talking. <laughs> I used to tell her this. I used to say, you know what? I know I'm not perfect. And I know that sometimes I'm short-tempered. Sometimes I'm impatient. Sometimes I'm a jerk. Sometimes i um, selfish. Sometimes I'm all these things. I say, but I will tell you right now to your face that I love God and I fear God. I love Him and I fear Him and that will not budge for nothing. I used to say that to you, mm -hmm. you know, I said, so I might be a mess. I might be a mess, but I will tell you, you're getting, you're getting a man that loves God with everything. Yeah. And so that's why I wanted to say that. Cause I'm not trying to be like Mr. Super Christian, yeah. you know? I know. And he, and he was absolutely right. You know, because, um, I think, I think my interpretation of love and all of that as well, um, it was all wrong as well. You know, for me, I think I came in thinking that um, my interpretation is that I needed affection, I needed love, I wanted, you know, it, it was so completely different. You know, I remember when I, when I moved out here, um, I thought, my gosh, Time's ticking here. This man's taking so long. We courted for three years, guys. And I was like, are you ever going to ask me to marry you? Why did you even ask me to come out here? You know, um, and I, I was wanting affection. I was wanting that love, you know, and all of that. And this man didn't say I love you till a very long time. Didn't hold my hand, didn't nothing, you know, and I was just, I was getting frustrated because I, my whole interpretation was completely different, not realizing that God was trying to show me a different type of love, like a real love, an unconditional love. <coughs> and and I, I didn't understand, you know, he was building a foundation. He was building an internal love that was from the inside it wasn't an outer love and I was just always so used to feeling an outer love a, a physical love a, a love of touch of hand of of always being told you know oh you're beautiful I love you and this and that the the feel good you know the little uh tickle of the ear type of love you mm -hmm. know and all of that but not realizing that the love that you know eventually my husband was going to show me is is the love of leading me as a man of god leads by by you know the works by doing by example of what a man of god does do he didn't have to um say many words he just led by example and i think you said that yesterday you said you know what let me lead by living and mm -hmm. living who Christ is in me. Oh, yeah, because we're quoting Paul. Yeah. And, and he, says, he said, imitate me imitate the way I me. imitate Christ. Exactly. And, and that's exactly what you were doing throughout that whole time. And I just followed. I didn't question. I learned to not question because there was times where I did question things and I, you were just so weird sometimes you know 
And when he would say, you know what, God's going to meet this need, God's going to do this. And I'd look at him and I just thought he was the weirdest man ever. But see, it was it was faith of him knowing and just knowing. And I just, I just followed, guys. I followed and I didn't ask no more questions anymore. And, uh, and this is where we're at now. Yeah. You know, you know, you just follow, you, you just go and that's faith. Yeah. It's walking you know, by faith. And it's like, and I don't even know who we're talking to, you know, but you know, for the guys, I'll, I'll speak to the guys and maybe you can speak to the women. Um, guys, you have to give. Okay, you know how, um, let me say it like this. I've never been to a circus, but I remember seeing cartoons or seeing shows where there's always a net underneath. And the people on the trapeze or whatever, or on the balance, they're balancing, trying to walk on a wire. There was always that net underneath them. That just in case they slipped, the net would catch them. Yeah. Okay. And here's why I think, guys, a lot of the women, your women, not women, the woman in your life, maybe is fearful or gets nervous with you, whether you've been serving God a long time or you're a brand new Christian, okay? Because they don't see no safety net. Yeah. They don't see it, you know? And you can't make yourself the safety. You can't say, well, um, in other words, you can't promise on your own self. Because let's say, let's say you are a certain way, uh, before Christ, they're always going to have that fear, whether it was looking at things or being around people you shouldn't have been in or just put yourself in different situations. And now that you're a Christian, you're getting angry saying, well, I'm a Christian now. You know, I'm not going to do that. Here, here's the thing. There's always going to be triggers or something. Yeah. The safety net has to be your love for Christ. They got to know, they got to know, they got to know. That you love the Lord so much that that I remember like telling Sharon, I'm like, I love the Lord so much that I won't cheat on you because I love him too much. Yeah. Not that I ever want to, but I want you to understand that I fear God and I love God and I don't wanna I don't wanna I don't wanna um displease him yeah it had nothing to do with me yeah you know and it's like so there's that safety net that even in arguments i wasn't going to put her down as if i wasn't a christian because she's still a daughter of him yeah she's still the daughter of christ yeah so how dare I speak to his daughter this way? How dare I speak? And trust me, there's times I, we would be mad. <laughs> but here's the th difference is that there's a, there's a line of, of being, because anger is a normal thing, guys. You're going to yeah. get, you're going to get hungry. You're going to get tired. You're going to get cranky. That does not give you a license to throw God out. And now I could just throw everything at her, give her the, call her the worst names in the book. No, no, no. You were a Christian when you're angry too. Yeah. You're a Christian when you're when when you're in a bad mood too. And and people forget that. They think like because somebody cuts you off, now you have a 5 minute license to not be a Christian to go flip people off and this mm -hmm. and that. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. So if you are showing no safety net of Christ, how do you expect her to trust anything you say? But if you show that, you know, like, like, and I'll say this, and, and, and I'll let you talk if you want to say something. Um, I had heard this before, and I think it's a perfect comparison. The, the vows between a married couple is the safety net. Because you might love your spouse, but you ain't always going to like them. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah. So the safety net is the vows that holds this thing together. Because on the days I don't like you, the vow is still there. The yeah. promise through richer for poor, through sickness and health, through all those things, it still applies whether you're not talking or on talking terms 
or you're on each other's nerves mm -hmm. or she's out of town or you're out of town, the vows, yeah. that vow, that promise, that oath that you made before God. Here's the thing that God says, when you make a promise, he holds you to it. Yeah. You know, that is the safety net. Yeah. So I don't know if you wanted to. Or if I spoke to both sides with that, I don't know. I, I believe you did. <laughs> you know, I, I just, I don't know how we got into this subject, but I don't know. Um, you know, this, on Sunday when we were um, leaving, when we were leaving the church, I know that we had a chance. We were talking to one of our newlywed couples, and that mm. newlywed couple was talking to one of the... Um, one of the younger couples that is going to be getting married, that they're engaged to get married. And, you know, they were talking about how it'd be really nice to do a trip with, you know, some of the newer couples, mm -hmm. you know, and stuff and the young couples, you know, and we'd be, we were like, you know, yeah, we have the van, you know, we should definitely get some of the couples and maybe do something with some of the young couples because it's, it's definitely needed. Yeah. Um, I, I, and I think, I don't know. I, I, I think that, we we started out that way you know we started out as a as a couple who who um had their their moments as well so we understand yeah um and i don't know i think it's just beautiful i i think the times of our communication like we sat down earlier in the car um we have our, our moments where we where we do communicate we've learned so much mm -hmm. about each other and I love the place where God has us. Yeah. You know, and I've seen so much growth in us as well. You know, over and 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 I'll be honest with you guys um and, and we've said this before ever since these devotionals began over what it's over a year. Yeah, it's way over a year. a year and a half now. Um there has been such a such a growth um even in our marriage. And I've realized that when people, when you have a couple that does things together, when it comes to the things of God, there is such, there is such a growth and a bond um, that just takes place within that marriage. Um, I, I, I don't even know how to explain it, but what, what happens is that it, it, it locks it locks something down so profound mm -hmm. that it leaves no space and no room for the enemy to come in and try to make its way because it's just so locked in, so, so good. And, and I think that's so important, um, especially nowadays with so many things that are going on around you know, the world, um, just within our lives. And I think that that's something that you need to do for your family, for your marriage. Um, and it's so important to, to do that at times like this right now. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think it's, it's cool that this just happened to be something that we just started <coughs> to talk about, you know? Yeah. There's so many things, you know, and I think the, for me, I, I didn't know what I was going to talk about, but I like the subject. <clears throat> but I will say this, is that because yesterday's video where I was talking about we need some generals. Yeah. And um, even though there's a few of you that asked about the Bible college and stuff, and there's some things I'm going to look at, I think the deeper things is, is what we're saying now. Yeah. This, this is what builds generals, is, is the reality of like marriage. This is what builds leaders, guys. This this realistic, just being real. Because, you know, I know a lot of you have pastors that you only see them on their best days. Because they're on a Sunday, and maybe they're not even approachable. And then they have a nice flyer with the big old Joel Osteen smile. And, you're just, and, and, and it seems unattainable. Like, man, I can never have a marriage like that. And you have no idea what it's really like. Hmm. You know, and I think doing videos like this and just being real, yeah. I think that's what people need. That that's that's what people need to grow, 
Because what if that's the missing link? You have all the education, all the books in the world, all this and that. But the realities, this is wisdom, guys. Yeah. This is wisdom that we didn't get from a book. This is wisdom through blood and tears and sweat. Yeah. Through fights and arguments and, and miscommunications and misunderstandings and, you know, different things that we've gone through. And, and I know to a lot of people, we haven't been together that long. There's a lot of you that have been together way longer than us. Mm, definitely. You know, but I think that because of pastoring a church, because of the situations that have happened and, and come forth, it made us, I feel like like we've been married for 20 years because of some of the stuff that we've had to face as, as pastors of a church. And there's wisdom in it. And, and uh, what the good thing about wisdom is this, is that we can freely share so somebody else doesn't have to take five years to learn yeah. what we had to learn in years. You, you can learn it, you know, by just hearing other people. You know, and and the thing is, is that we're willing, we're willing, um, we're willing to share it. You know, we're willing to as we're learning. Uh, yeah, as we learn, not like we attained it. Not yeah, like we, no, we're just willing to just allow it to just be part of our our lives. Something that we want to just allow it just to be open and shared with you guys because this is. This is what we want to do. We just want to be open with you guys and just um, always be as real as we can with you guys. And um, and we just want to be available, you know, yeah. and be as any any help as we can um, to you guys. Yeah. So I think that's pretty much it, guys. Yeah. Um, have a blessed day. Have, hopefully the coffee was good. Yes. You know, we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow's devotional. Uh, leave a comment. We love, we love, we love your comments, man. We look forward to it. Mm -hmm. It's it's encouraging to us. It lets us know, like, there's certain subjects we touch where we get more comments than others. If this is maybe a subject you like to hear about, you got to let us know. Because if you don't comment, we'll, we will think, oh, they don't want to hear about marriage. Yeah, we're getting back into the groove of things, guys. You know, we're slowly getting into the groove of things i know that um you know it it seems like our days um are starting to slowly progressively we're 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 getting there it's day by day um i'm i'm starting to to feel a little bit you know i know we get tired a little bit but i'm starting to feel a little bit better i don't know about you i think but... i have a fever right now no really honestly Oh, babe. Yeah. yeah, guys, but there's days where, you know, like, honestly, my eyes are really swollen. I, it's really weird because I told you yesterday that I felt like I had no saliva. Oh, yeah. My eyes are super dry, guys, and something's so weird. Don't cry. Dry your eye. Here comes your mother with those two little guys. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like I have no, I haven't been able to produce any, um, like tears really like it's hard and and no saliva and i've just been super thirsty and i've had to use those artificial those artificial, oh you tried it again yeah i put some more artificial tear those artificial tear stuff and <coughs> my eyes i keep waking up with them swollen and it's just weird guys and today we were just like tired so we get our little rest and then we move and we do a little bit of things and i know david's been not feeling so good well, today no, it had, when I, I was fine and um we had a good run an errand today because um i was supposed to mail some stuff and my tire was flat yeah we and, and it was tire. like and it was a little bit of air and there's a gas station like four blocks away so i'm just like we got to get this fixed because you have doctor's appointments tomorrow because well, yeah. today for you guys. Yeah. And I'm just like, we, and we get our tires where they, they have warranty, you know. So um, so there I go and air the tire up at this local gas station. And it aired, I found there was a huge screw in the tire. But it held air enough to get to American Tire, you know. And um, we were hungry. <laughs> we were going to just do that quick errand. 
And um, they're like, yeah, it's going to be over an hour. Yeah, so we went to eat in the meantime. Yeah, so we went to the nearest food place. And I didn't think I told you until the, we're coming back that my head was pounding. No, you did tell me. You said you started to feel pressure. A lot of pressure in my mm-hmm. head, which because it was um, maybe half a block away. But as you guys know, we can't really... We can barely, we can yeah. barely walk, you know, and and we and, walked half a half a block to eat, and then and then walking back, my head started pounding, and, and then my spine has has been acting. Yeah, up. my spine and then I kept been, asking you, I'm like, are you sure you're okay walking? Yeah. And you're like, no, it's okay. So we took our time and just just very took our time, but still, man, I'm, I'm telling you, man, this thing is, is crazy, right? So finally, we get our car back. And thank God they, they switched it. Brand new tire. Yeah, and then yeah. I had to go. I'm I'm, then, wor- no, I'm working on, on... Well, then we actually went to do the errand, which was to go to Hobby Lobby. Yeah, I had to go That's get some, what we had to some do. lace or something for, you know, for one of the crafts that I'm doing for my son's wedding. And we waited and we somehow waited in the line. And the young girl that was doing the register literally took like 15 20 minutes on the person that was in front of us but you know we're patient we don't lose we were talking we were talking didn't think much of it it was about 15 minutes guys with one person we were second in line so i'm just like oh man thank god you know we'll just get get out of here so we can get home because we were tired because my head was hurting And, and and then we're next yeah we're next and she was going super duper slow to the point where I started to feel real agitated like to the point where I felt like I couldn't breathe a little bit of I was like David I don't know what's going on you know I'm I'm he's like do you need to go outside and get some air and I'm like no I'm let's just get this done and over with but she was going super slow like she didn't know what she was doing or I don't know but I didn't want to that try not to lose my patience and you know the people that were behind us decided to walk out not even pay for their stuff and she can't stop them but she they they just walked out and um are you hiccuping why i don't know i got the hiccups all of a sudden and then um and then she just kept take she just took long she took like how long like 20 minutes 15 minutes Uh, another 15 minutes So. so Go ahead. Yeah, because you're going to keep hiccuping. Yes. So, um, you know, first of all, Hobby Lobby is a big store. So that was kind of a lot, which honestly, she has to get it because her son's going to get married. But having walked to, to go eat and then back, my head was pounding, and then walking through Hobby Lobby, getting what she needed and getting in line, and then having to wait 15 minutes, and then like 15 minutes for us, I was done. Like, my legs started to feel like they were super heavy. I didn't say nothing to her because she was after. she was not feeling good. Because I, I had to get something at the pet store for my fish. It was It's in the same shopping center. So we get to the car, and she goes, are you going to go the, to the pet store? I'm like, I'm done. Like, I said something like that. I can't, you know. Yeah. And... Um, Long story short, and we already made this story longer than it should have been, but it messed us up. Like that's why I'm just like, I don't, I don't feel right, and I feel feverish right now, you know. And and we were just talking, you know, a little while ago, saying, man, we we think we're taking it easy, but I, man, that was, we need to really slow this down because I don't want to prolong us getting better. You know, because here's the thing, in a perfect world, you walk into Hobby Lobby, get one item, get in line, and we leave. That's what we thought. Yeah. But sometimes it's situations we can't control. Yeah. And we ended up standing a whole lot longer than we should have been standing, especially you. You know, and we have to kind of be careful with that. You know, and so yeah. it's it's been a rough day, guys. It is, guys. You know, and, you know, at home, what I do is I kind of... My way of cleaning right now, I do it in increments. What I do is I, I organize for like 10, 15 minutes and then I'll sit down and and then I'll get up and I'll do something for another 10 minutes and then I'll, I'll have to rest. 
but that's my way of cleaning right now um, and just doing stuff. But I kind of find myself having to do things in just little increments of time. Um, I have to kind of spread my time wisely, um, possibly just to not let things gather up on me. But um, I know that the Lord just continues to strengthen us. Um, I do have an appointment tomorrow. Today. Or for today uh, for you guys. Um, but, you know, we're just hoping that we get more answers. Um, and uh, and I'll keep you guys posted, guys, you know, as, as, uh, as these appointments come and they let us know what's going to be happening. But I know that we definitely need answers. Um, because I, I definitely don't want to go through no paralysis again, that's for sure. And we're just going to continue praying that the Lord just continue to, you know, strengthen my, my, my spine and strengthen what, with what's going on in my body and, and complete healing. Because I, I believe that, you know, I, I don't like that feeling. It's not, a, it's not a good feeling, guys. It's not. Yeah. So... All right, guys. It's getting late. Yeah, we I love still, you guys. I still got to render this video, so and upload it. And uh, um, have a great day. Have a blessed day. Thank you for for just hanging out with us today. Yeah. Amen. All right. We love you guys. Bye. Bye.